My name is Stolo Valdrug. I work for Sintef. Uh, I'm here at, in, in Portugal uh, with uh, my colleague uh, Patrick in the back row. Uh, this presentation was prepared by me and, and my colleague Alan Stav. Um, it's about the function modeling tool. We heard about it uh, in the last two previous days. And today I will present the background, the motivation for using it, and how we have developed it. It's, it was developed from scratch. Uh, and I will just present the status and, and how we will proceed. So, and um, if there are any questions, uh, you can see them uh, to, to the end, but you can also ask during the presentation because there are maybe some diagrams you need to understand. So, um, and again, uh, thank you to Marina for preparing uh, everything and allowing us to present today. So, uh, this slide, I noticed that some of you have skipped it, but uh, the information contained in this document may not be modified or used. So, make sure to, to, to you, you can read it. Uh, and uh, this is the content of the presentation. First, some background and motivation for doing this requirement, uh, this, uh, this uh, functional. Uh, molding tool and, and some into requirements how we it fits into the overall tool chain you heard from uh, Martin Halle from uh, TU Hamburg that there's a big tool chain several tools involved many interfaces and, uh, and the next speaker will talk about the uh, ATF this this uh, actually tool framework that will connect everything uh, and, 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 uh, and that that will be an important part as well uh, there are some dis design challenges that we have come across uh, working with this functional molding tool. Um, I, I will also, as I said, uh, this, explain the methods and some of the results. And not only verification, but how we do or we plan to do validation on them to finally end up some future work. So the main motivation for having a functional molding tool, uh, it was written into the description of work. I think it was identified as a result from the Scarlet project that maybe we should try to introduce something uh, that that can capture in an early phase uh, uh, the overall structures, the overall function blocks that need to that can be used later in in the development process. So it will enable the platform architect to provide a centralized architecture definition with a unified information model. I was said, um, and that's what we're trying to do. And it should support this iterative development process. And as you may know, if you have doing, been doing uh, model driven development, there are different viewpoints and some different concerns. There are different aspects of, of doing uh, development. So there is no way we can design a, a complete model in, in the first phase if we need to support iterations. So several optimization loops may be required. And then comes the hard uh, goals of this, this tool. We, they want it, or the users want to save time. They will only use this tool if it actually saves time for them, or it can enable them to work more efficiently or at a higher quality. So save time, replace, or maybe uh, in the first phase complement some core configuration documents and maybe do some uh, validation of design in the early phase even before uh, the early validation tool from Thales that is, a, is another tool that comes uh, after the function modeling tool in a, in a tool chain. So we have some initial requirements. We should support um, the designer in creating an overall architecture, identify different components, and for each component, identify the resource needs what will this component need uh, with respect to memory, network, and, and uh, computing uh, resources. It needs to work with other tools, um, but it should also be used in an established working environment where there are some diff uh, specific processes. And uh, as I mentioned, the core configuration documents are, are mainly based on Excel spreadsheets. So, uh, and, uh, and this is a quite flat design, so we needed to transform spreadsheets into something that specifies both properties on classes, uh, the rela relationships between classes, and, and other uh, uh, top-level uh, constraints such as uh, um, hardware um, constraints or, or mounting zones constraints. 
So, uh, and there were some other additional requirements, such as tool interfaces. Um, during the design process, as this was an iterative approach, we needed to support a flexible way of updating the tool. And, uh, of course, part of this is that we need to uh, do a validation with the end user, make sure that they can actually use it, understand how to use it. So we may need to uh, change the layout, how it is presented and perceived by the end user. And moreover, uh, this is something that most people uh, in, in software engineering struggle with, and it's a scale up. Normally, for when you start developing something, you use like a toy example with small amount of data, but now, as this should be in a, uh, used in a real environment in the end, Hopefully, at least, uh, we need to scale up and make sure that we support all the elements in, in, the, in the design. So just describe uh, the, 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 the place in the, in the, in the tool chain. The, f the function modeling tool is up here. It will be used, and then it will be export some data to the platform evaluation tool. The results from the platform evalu evaluation tool will then be fed back to the function modeling tool and here we can have several iterations. After we have reached a stable um, architecture definition or overall high-level architecture definitions, we, the function molding tool will then export the, its structures and its needs and, um, and uh, module allocations to the platform configuration tool that uh, Martin presented before lunch. So, um, with respect to design challenges, we had some external uh, interfaces to other tools in the tool chain. We need to define them. And um, of course, uh, there are some, there were some overlapping uh, uh, functionality between the tools, and we make sure that the meta molds fit together. Uh, it's an heterogeneous user group. There are different cultures, there are different legacy systems, different experience when it comes to. Uh, uh, using molds and as a an, uh, uh, design or even programming language. And there are also uh, other tools that are involved that we need to take into account. And then for us in, in Syntef, uh, being outside uh, the avionics domain in, when it comes to the tools, we had some challenges uh, with respect to IPR and how, what kind of information we could share. So the testing and the, and the internal development processes had to uh, use different kind of co collaboration techniques. So integration testing had to be agreed up front and so on. This is the overall structure of how the function modeling tool are supposed to be used. First, uh, the first phase you define something called the logical functions. These are really, really high level. So function two here has some input from function three and function one which again has some signals that comes from function uh, four. This is the first the phase in the, in the design of the function model. So when this is done, uh, you start another model that is physical functions. Here you add details, and details uh, regarding uh, resources, regarding relationships, and what kind of properties they can set, and so on. So for instance, you have different uh, media types here, you have different power sources here, and you can also add uh, other properties that are defined in, in something called a metamol. I'll just uh, tell you about this later. Here, at an early phase, you can say that, for instance, function one and function three should have some hardware segregation. So they should, in the end, be deployed to two different hardware devices. So when you're done with the physical function modeling, you can export to the validation tool, and what you get back from validation tool is an, what is called here an architecture model instantiated function blocks where the functions are actually uh, allocated to, to module type A instance 1, module type B instance 2, and so on. So it's a three-step procedure, and after this, of course, we then export to, to the configuration tool. So in order to start defining our uh, DSL, that is domain-specific language, uh, we had bi-weekly workshops with the AirFramer. In this case, it was Airbus. We had all the two developers, uh, Thales and, and, uh, and 
at TU Hamburg, and we have very close contact with a system designer expert. Uh, defining a meta model is like describing a new language. You are only able to express what is actually defined in a meta model. So uh, you start from nothing, and then you add a element to the meta model. Then you're, let's say, it's an aircraft. Then you can create an air aircraft. An aircraft may have function blocks, so we need to add a meta model element called uh, function blocks. Uh, Martin showed a, a high level or a, a small uh, meta model for for the configuration tool, configuration tool, and so we did uh, uh, for the function modeling tool a similar, not quite similar, but uh, using the same kind of technology, uh, meta model. So the meta model, the DSL. Uh, is actually what you are able to express. So when it comes to integration, testing with other tool developers, we had to find another uh, a relevant example. We started out with toy examples again, but we quite soon realized that we had to get a really good example. And so we did some, uh, we were in contact with North Micro that uh, we're doing uh, a ventilation control uh, system uh, as a part of the Ashley uh, project. And we use this as, a, as, a, as an example or a case for all the testing. And uh, in August this year, I was in, uh, in Munich to get with North Micro, Micro, and we installed the system in their computer, uh, on their computers, and we tried, or we actually did, mold the, the, uh, a small part of the uh, ventilation control system. Uh, this is a sketch on how the t actually the tool is built up. Uh, the blue frame here defines the function modeling tool. There are some dependencies. For instance, we use Eclipse. We use the EMF, the Eclipse modeling framework. And we also use Axeleo for multi-text transformation from this transformation plugin. Uh, we have a help plugin here that depends on, uh, on the Ashley tool framework that allows us to, you will hear in the next speaker, we'll talk about the tool framework. Uh, we also have another dependency to something called Sirius, and Sirius is the newest molding framework addition. It allows us to define a viewpoint, which is a very powerful and flexible way of representing a graphical uh, uh, model. And from these, uh, these plugins, we can export uh, XMI files to be used by the early validation, IMA files to be used by the early validation tool. We can export other files to be used by the configuration tool and so on. So this is, uh, so, so again, this blue frame defines the function molding tool that this is today. Uh, so the function model has some properties, it has some topology, and has constraints between and the different uh, properties on the function blocks. So uh, it's too much details right now, but one of the things that we had to think a lot about when we designed the language is whether this should be a property in the, in the model or it should be like an external library that needs to be changed for between the aircraft types. So we added support for having a library model and uh, that contains standard values for properties such as power sources, ATA references to the chapters, different routes, bus speeds, and so on. So there is also a dynamic part of the tool that can be loaded and changed over time. Here is the example. And this is the example, uh, the ventilation control system, uh, and the logical part of it. You can see here we have the VCS application. Um, there are some logos or signs here. Here's a computing um, type. Here is the criticality. Here is the failure rate and so on. So you are able to set different properties on the, on the molding elements. Uh, up here you can uh, switch on and off different layers. There are some relationships, name, and so on. Here are mounting zone segregation, hardware segregation, and power feed segregation, and so on. The, the lightning indicates uh, power, uh, power relationship or power line. 
So uh, overall, uh, this is the molding part uh, that you create. This was a simple example. We also had a palette where you can create, create a function I.O. block. You can have a function supp supplier equipment, signal, power, or you can create a group. Here are two different groups um, that needs to be segregated with respect to hardware. And it's a reference to ATA chapter uh, 21. So from the logical model, you create or you derive of the physical uh, model. The physical model has lots more details. Uh, here are only the, some of them shown. Uh, it's not very clear, but you can see that there are references or there are properties for IO type. There are uh, power feed properties and so on. And if you click on all of them, you can see what kind of resources that has been uh, that have been side, uh, assigned, uh, or the resource needs that have, that have been set. It's uh, as I mentioned, different NVM, NVM, uh, logbook, uh, and memory computing, and so on. And all these have uh, values and spare values, and everything can be actually defined here. And in this example, we have also got a feedback from the value, uh, earlier validation tool where the allocation of these functions are then put into different RCEs. So this model is almost complete, so we can export it to the configuration tool. So when it comes to evaluation, we, can, we have done some internal evaluation, that is local testing with Airframer and other two developers have installed it and tested it. The external evaluation is with North Micro. We did uh, install it on their computers, as I said, and we did some molding on a real system. Uh, we got lots of feedback, uh, and it was really important to be there on site with the, with the function supplier and do this evaluation in order to get some real uh, good feedback. Uh, and there is also possibilities to, to, to evaluate the, mo the language, the meta model itself, with some quality evaluation criteria that we, we are looking into. And when it comes to DSL quality, there are several things to think about. You have such thing as the modeler appropriateness that this meta model or this tool, this language allows the molder to express what he wants to express and that it is participant appropriateness, means that is it perceived the way it should be perceived? Uh, is it appropriate for the organization? Is it, for instance, in accordance with the goals of the airframer to use? Uh, and is it complete? So there are different evaluation needs is it appropriate for the domain? Can it, is the language rich enough to express all the concepts in the domain that are uh, relevant? And of course, the tool appropriateness, that means is the tool developed correctly so you can do validation within a tool so that you can do maybe some automatic procedures, export to uh, do some reasoning and checking within a tool. So all these uh, uh, evaluations, we are and pl are planning to do. So, verification. Is the tool correct? Uh, then we look at the requirements and those requirements with, uh, marked here with a green uh, V, we, we, we have fulfilled to uh, a sufficient degree. We support the designer in, in creating an overall system architecture the component uh, topology. We allow the system designer to specify resource needs. We support the design process, and we all have already integrated with the existing tool chain. Whether we are able now to, ex to replace or even complement the, the, the Excel-based configuration sp spreadsheet, I don't think so, but we are working on it. And the same goes for these additional requirements. So we are working on the layout, we are working on how to scale up, and we are working on more details based on evaluation from the, from the function supplier. 
So this was the verification part, and this is a very, very engineering type of activity. What is not so easy, or what is actually harder, is the validation part. So here we ask, is, is the tool correct? And is it the correct tool? Have we chosen a design that actually is, is, is able to, to, to do what the initial goals of the activity was? So um, we think that we can at least <coughs> support uh, the different viewpoints and abstraction levels. We also support the iterative development and uh, with respect to optimization. We are working on uh, how to evaluate the result from the modeling activity, make sure that it's a central, uh, centralized architecture definition that has a unified information model. Uh, when it comes to whether we are able to replace the CCD and save time and also improve validation verification, we don't know yet, but we are planning evaluation activities to, 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 to address this uh, question. So in the past, that is what we have done. For the future, we'll iterate on the tool, we will evaluate, we'll update, and we'll have iterations on this in a design science activity.